speak to us a little bit about the, the NSA and what you're really looking for when you encrypt things and what the challenges are there? Well, let's say a large organization that has a desire to know. <clears throat> First of all, everything you've heard so far is at the conceptual level, how things ought to work. Then there comes the real world, how it really works, the implementation. The box that you saw being worked over there was not a set of words on paper of what wire to plug to what. It was metal and wires in there. And the Enigma was not subject to this, but other logics were. It was quite possible that if you walk up to some boxes in the field that are doing perfectly good encryption, and you had a hammer, and you whacked the box in just the right spot, the key would automatically reset to a default key. That's very convenient, cryptanalysis. Okay? <laughs> now, unfortunately, it's transmitting to a, 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 another device which hasn't been hit yet. So what you have to have is janitors on staff at both organizations who go in at midnight and whack each one, and then you can listen to the line as well as the transmitters can. Trivial example, and that's what's called root force analysis. <laughs> sort of, yeah. You can be a little more subtle about it and try to do it with mathematics instead, in which case you hit, um, this is all made very simple and it's not quite this easy, but maybe you uh, don't hit it very hard. It's just hard enough to break a wire inside. But the same wire is fragile in all of them. So a gentle tap, which nobody can hear outside the door, just breaks wires, which still makes it enciphered, but in a trivial cipher. Something that's very simple, like adding the same number to every character that goes by. So you have a monoalphabetic substitution, the same as you work in a crossword puzzle in the newspaper in the morning by hand. But it looks like cipher. And it's just those two parties talking. And many military systems are point to point only, not two networks. You've got them. They're talking, they think they're secure, they can see the cipher written down, it looks like trash, you can still break it and read it. These are oversimplified examples, but it all matters what is going on in the implementation. And we in the government realize that GIs carried hammers and could do this sort of stuff. It was demonstrated frequently for us in the military. So we spent extra time and money. A box from a large organization with a desire to know cost money to build and it took time to design because we anticipated these sorts of things, tried them out, practiced them, and we attacked them before we ever released them. It took three to five years to design, five to seven years to test, and then field test for another three years before it's actually sending tra uh, classified traffic between soldiers in the field. The commercial world doesn't want to pay that price. Hmm. They want to build very quickly out of stuff and just uh, you know, let it go. And so it makes a lot of fun. They've got good cryptography running. It's on little computers and chips, and they're radiating like swine. And all you have to do is have receivers near their devices. And in many cases, you can pick up enough unintended emanations that you can read the traffic that the guy is sending, and you haven't touched the box, you haven't broken it in any sense, but you're still reading the text because it was not a robust implementation. They didn't spend enough time doing it right. 